Yes, yes, we actually won. We actually won. Uh, I was actually been getting recurring nightmares throughout the week. Uh, everybody knows if you watch my videos, I've been complaining about Joseph Swatley's selection. And boy, boy, I was getting nightmares about he getting sent off. I was getting nightmares about the Wallabies not able to defend the rolling more. I was getting nightmares about England just running us through uh, 10 penalties and just Marcus Smith kick record 30 points uh, lead over us, right? But hey, none of that happened, and I was very, very, very pleased. In fact, I was pretty happy if we lost my two points at the end, and we actually pulled out uh, with Max Jorgensen, Max Jorgensen, uh, winning the game. Oh, boys. <laughs> I actually can't believe we scored at the end. Uh, let me get you Nice old float, said Jorgensen. You know, that's a little story about Max Jorgensen. Rugby League really wanted this guy, and... He was actually locked up by Rugby Union beforehand, and it's something that the Rugby League punditry talks about quite a, uh, you know, not quite a bit, talks about every now and then, uh, if they do talk about Rugby Union, is that the fact that, uh, you know, Max Jorgensen is a guy that really wanted to, to bring over, and they failed to do so. They consider that a bit of a, a bit of a, a bit of a recruitment fail there, and, and tonight, he showed everyone why all the Rugby League pundits are regretting not signing, putting more money on the table for him to convert to Rugby League, or to, to play Rugby League when he finished school. So yeah, uh, that was a spectacular finish. I mean, I mean, I mean, I think Rugby Australia should really open up the checkbook and make sure everybody gets a massive raise after this one, and nobody goes overseas by the end of the season, and uh, that was, you know, I, I, you know, I, you, I, you my pre-game analysis, I thought the, the, the English had the edge in the loose forwards with Ben Earl, Tom Curry around the breakdowns, uh, but that was not the case. Uh, the, the Cunningham South did have some physical perform, uh, you know, dominance early in the game, but when the fatigue kicked in, the England team just dropped off. They, you know, the, the Wallabies were tired too, right? Like, all the forwards were tired, uh, but the Wallabies had the, 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 the most important thing, had the heart, in my opinion, to push through the pain and kept on the pressure. And that was the difference, all right? The England had a dominance early, and they just completely let that go once the fatigue kicked in and the Wallabies pushed through and the Wallabies forwards. My goodness, they did some tremendous amount of work tonight. Angus Bell, uh, hard carries, uh, you, you know, what was his name? Jeremy Williams scored a try. Uh, I think the one, the one guy I, I probably, you know, overlooked the most in my preview, which is Harry Wilson. I thought he was going to have his number done done in by Ben Earl. Uh, it was not the case. Harry Wilson was by far the better number eight out there tonight. The ball carries, the defense, just the grunt amount of work that was done out there uh, was just absolutely spectacular. You know, Ben Earl's played a little bit wider and he likes to do the rush defense. Was not that potent tonight at all. And it, and uh, Harry Wilson, whilst not, you know, assigned to do the rush defense, was really, really, really potent in the tight areas, disrupting the breakdowns, and uh, just doing everything you want from a big number eight with uh, with, with that physical dominance uh, left and right. And all of Seal's kicking game was much better as well. I was very, very pleased. Uh, sometimes his crossfield kicks just a bit inaccurate, just kind of like kicking the ball away. He really managed that really well. And that overall, I think the long range kicks just for when he when he when he when you wanted him to kick for territory, he made the right decision and punted the ball down the field uh, and gave the gave the Wallabies nice distance to work with as well. So I was really happy with that. The counter attacking from Tom Wright was exceptional, something that we saw in Super Rugby. He struggled a little bit early in the season, not able to transition that into Test Rugby. And tonight he was very 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 dangerous. So many times the Wallabies just counter attacked uh, from him inside their own twenty two and getting into uh, the England half quite. Uh, quite quite nicely with just a bit of a determination and a bit of a heart and uh, getting themselves in there. Uh, outside of that, I thought the post-contact offloads were really good from everybody. Not just Swali, you know, Rugby Australia and the commentary would well, like to talk him up because his $9 million investment uh, was really good. Like, you know, uh, I think everybody it, it was did, did quite well in the post-contact offloads. Uh, the one advantage I did think that Swali had, a, like, like, you know, had a, if you were to talk about a definite edge that he brought to the team, I thought was the high ball from the kickoff. Uh, that was something that uh, the, his ability to leap so high and just like dis disrupt the, the kick off, and uh, he actually won the kick off a couple of times for the Wallabies was just uh, was really really exceptional there. Uh, in, in addition, uh, if I was to criticize him a little bit, his tackling uh, still um, I have a massive question mark on his tackling, uh, not just technique but his ability to to make dominant tackles. I, mean, I know he hasn't he wasn't tell us tested much tonight by the England team to my surprise. Uh, but the few times he did try to make tackles uh, look very shaky. So just give you guys a quick look, just so you know what I'm talking about here. That's what I'm so this one here is kind of that's, that's kind of a misread. The, 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 you know, you kind of misread that. And um, yeah, it's just you know the the, the the tackling technique again. He's don't really look like he's like here. Look here, just the shoulder in that you know that 
that sort of thing, just a shoulder. He does that quite a bit this game. Um, it's it's yeah, it's, it's definitely a rugby league habit and something that I think the coaching staff needs to work with. Uh, outside of that, I thought his performance was pretty decent for a day, for something what you would expect for nine million dollars, I guess. Uh, you know, creative space when he was given the ball. Uh, he didn't really make. I don't think he made any line breaks. He did. He did make some really good post contact uh, offloads. And like I said, the high ball from the kickoff was really, really, really well done from Joseph Swali. I guess the ultimate question is for Rugby Australia to 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 answer is that is is nine million dollar worth worth what you got for the talent? There's no doubt he's got talent. There's no doubt he's good. But is nine million dollars the right price tag for that talent, uh, considering? how good the rest of the team performed tonight and how much they're only getting paid, you know, a fraction of, of his salary uh, out there tonight. Uh, for the England, Marcus Smith, my goodness. If, if Swali gets 9 million, Marcus Smith should get 20 million, right? He was the only person in the England side that was actually creating opportunity for the team. That was He was single-handedly winning the game for England, uh, and uh, that's how good he was. And he, his, his, the grubber kicks from him was so pinpoint accurate he was like, literally, they, 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 they say it like threading a needle. There was a number, there was, a, what, two tries? His, him setting up, just grab a kick, uh, the ball through a king point accurate. There was like, you know, two, three Wallabies defenders and the ball bounces perfectly for his uh, English teammate. Uh, it was just spectacular overall. And his ability to identify space in front of him as well, just being able to uh, decide whether he wants to kick it, whether he wants to run the ball. And just always a danger when he gets the ball. Like he was moved to fullback as well when the, when he was a fullback. He will look more dangerous from the counter attack as well. There's everything this guy does was absolutely um, insane. Like he he actually reminds me of the style that he plays. Actually reminds me of uh, Richie Mwonga a little bit. The, the way he just holds the ball a little bit and identify the space in front of him. And he just kind of does like little pause and then he just go and then you like you're like oh your you defense just like not really sure what he wants to do and suddenly he's just like away uh, through a gap. And, uh, and yeah, in addition, I think he's, you know, these pinpoint accurate kicking is probably a little bit better than Rishi Mwonga when he was playing for the All Blacks. So, uh, Marcus Smith, super, super impressive. If England had won that game, Marcus Smith would have been the only, like, literally, he would be the person that won the game for England. And, uh, and he almost did it. He, like, the, the Wallabies were, were leading. England looked down, and now the English forwards look like, uh, what, what are we going to do? And Marcus Smith just like, yeah, you know, I'll sort this out. And just single-handedly putting it out, uh, a rabbit out of rabbit out of hat multiple times to get England out of trouble. Uh, one guy I thought did really well was um, uh, uh, Slidehorn came off the bench. Uh, he looked very, very big, and he was very fast. Uh, created a lot of pressure for the wall, uh, for the English team. Uh, the one guy as well I thought did uh, badly, I think probably everybody was thought was George Ford throwing that intercept under pressure by the defense and uh, letting Callaway score the second try for the Wallabies before, you know, before Marcus Smith had to tidy him up again. And, uh, and the big issue for, for England as well, this has been a plaguing issue. Every week I talk about England rugby, I talk about this, is that the fact that once England take the lead, they play against the clock as the 16th player, right? So you can see it. England had a tiny lead uh, before the intercept from Callaway. They just wanted to kick the ball away and King, you know, box kick, box kick. They did not want to have the ball, anything to do with the ball. And then eventually they had to do a line out and then George Ford throws the, the intercept to Callaway. And suddenly it's like, oh, what are we going to do, guys? Ah, oh, we're going to have to play rugby again. And then Marcus Smith is the only one. So, yeah, don't worry, guys. I'll sort this one out. Uh, so, you know, setting up a grubber kick, uh, ending up with Tom Wright tackling goal. And then, you know, five minutes uh, line out and suddenly the English four pack is like, oh, Oh yeah, we, 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 they can see the try line. They, they're getting a bit excited and getting a bit of adrenaline going and pounce himself through uh, to, to score there. But eventually, uh, the Wallabies shot even more hard. Like I said, the whole game, the Wallabies shot hard. The scrum went for ages. I couldn't watch. I uh, just kept on collapsing. And then eventually the ball came out. Just build, build, build. Four minutes into extra time before the Wallabies were able to spread the ball out wide uh, to Max Jorgensen. But when, uh, again, let Nicky Tell drawn pass, textbook, flick pass out of back. Haven't seen that from him. I, I've seen him before, but I haven't seen that from him in Test Rugby. I saw him do that in Super Rugby, definitely. And, uh, man, I was just spectacular down the sideline. Uh, the entire tw Twickenham was just dead silence. Could not believe what they were seeing. And uh, it was just, like, in disbelief that the Wallabies actually pulled this one through. Really, really well done. And, uh, yeah, I've got to give credit to the coaching staff as well, putting the rest of the team together. Um, this was, you know, the, 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 this was... Compared to the team that, that was handed to Joe Schmidt at the beginning when 
uh, when Eddie Jones left, the, the, you know, when they played against Wales, when the team couldn't even defend a, a basic rolling moor, right? I, I was, you know, the, the drunk blokes, my, my local rugby football club, uh, you know, whilst 10 beers down, still knows how to defend a rolling moor. And then the Wallabies did not know how to defend a rolling moor uh, not that long ago. And now that this team was yeah, really, 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 the England was under pressure, the lineouts, uh, the, the rolling more was defended quite well. The Wallabies more was probably slightly better uh, over the English as well. So, yeah, uh, I, I don't know. This uh, this needs to be, you know, when it comes to England, I think there needs to be like a culture shift uh, somehow, somewhere, because you, you can't just box kick every time you got the ball when you're leading. Right, like there's like five minutes left on the clock. You can't just box kick everything away, uh, and I think that is just a, a a culture thing. And you know, the 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 English, the English just couldn't quite get over the hump that they needed to to play rugby. They can't just milk the clock down. And um, I don't know. Uh, that, that, I think that it's it's just a plaguing culture issue at England at this point. So let's have a look at the results. Yeah, forty two points to thirty seven. Really well done. Five tries for both sides and. Uh, it's uh yeah it is a very 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 good performance from the Wallabies. Uh, the stats let's have a look at that. Five hundred and thirty six strong minutes for the Wallabies, four hundred and fifty six for England. Carries one hundred and sixty one for the Wallabies, one hundred and twenty two for England. Thirteen turnovers conceded for the Wallabies, twenty. Then Fraser McRae, Harry Wilson did a tremendous amount of especially Fraser McRae did a tremendous amount of work at the breakdowns. Uh, the English defense was uh, the English forwards was just really especially when they fatigued. It was pretty decent at the beginning. When the fatigue, fatigue kicked in, was just like lacking at the breakdowns left and right. Missed tackle count as well for England, extortionately high. 36 out of 195 tackles. Steve Bothwick uh, will probably be begging Felix Jones to come back. Because, you know, Felix Jones, as soon as he leaves, uh, the defensive uh, prowess just goes out of the window. The urgency as well. Excuse me. The urgency as well from the England defense. The rush defense was just not there this week compared to last week against the All Blacks. 139 tackles made for the Wallabies, 24 missed tackles. Kicks in play, 27 for England, 25 for the Wallabies. Two conversions missed from Marcus Smith on the sideline. One missed by, um, I think it was a lot of CEO. One missed, uh, but overall was not too bad in terms of goal kicking. Kick from hands, England, 648 short short box kicks left and right. The Wallabies had more distance, 758, like I was saying. And the Nola CEO was doing really well. To like counter the English kick again by returning with a much longer kick than uh, that we're used to from him. And lineouts, two lineout loss from the from the Wallabies, uh, zero from England. And uh, I thought the the uh, I thought the lineup was okay. It wasn't that bad overall. I think there was uh, the lineups was I think the lineup loss was overthrown for the Wallabies uh, rather than England stealing it. Uh, scrums, one loss from each side was pretty highly contested the battle uh, in the first half. I thought um, what well, was his name? Ellis Genge had a bit of a bit of a bit of a go at Tupo, and I thought Tupo was under quite a bit of pressure from Genge. And then in the second half, I thought the uh, the loose air side on the uh, on uh, again, I think it's the loose air side who was a uh, I think it was a new guy, the, the kid that looked like he was twelve years old. Uh, anyway, the, the, the yeah, the same same thing happened in the second half. I thought the loose air side was a bit more dominant for the English English team. Uh, penalties conceded, six for England, eight for the Wallabies. Pretty good for both teams. No yellow cards, thank goodness. No yellow cards for anybody, but um, uh, yeah, overall, uh, I think the, the the massive improvements from the Wallaby side was was just was really, 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 really touching, really touching. That was really good. Uh, so so yeah, let's have a look at the uh, the overall scoring. Um, early in the game, there was yeah again uh, about four minutes into the game, the the uh, Marcus Smith kicking again is starting to show. It didn't look chip over the top and that was recovered by Ollie Lawrence and then just some quick hands uh, England got really close to trial and then Cunningham South pounded himself over five points to nil for England already four minutes into the game uh, eight minutes into the game the Wallabies get themselves into the England half got a penalty and they kicked for three three points to five eleven points into the game again England was uh, was you know putting pressure inside the Wallabies inside the, the, the 22 uh, there was a penalty advantage England uh, go for a, a quick tap putting pressure on and uh, yeah, this was also on the back end of Marcus Smith cutting through a defensive line, and eventually England forwards pound, 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 pounding the try line a few phases before cutting him south once again, going in for the second try. Twelve points to three. Uh, there was a uh, eighteen minutes into the game, there was a um, a breakdown penalty 
uh, the, uh, the, the commentary was right. The England England players was on the wrong side of the ruck, disrupting the Wallabies from the from the from the clean out. Uh, England gets a turnover anyway, so England kicks three, 15 points to three. This is not looking pretty bad for me uh, at this point. I, I was like, yeah, well, that's that's you know the the England side is clearly more physical, clearly more dominant, and luckily for for us, the English four pack always do this. In fact, the English team does this when they're ahead. They just take uh they just decided to, to, to take it easy 26 minutes into the game uh england ball was pretty poorly defended uh there was a penalty advantage uh for the wallabies some the ball came out some good hands nice draw and pass i think there was this was joe joseph saw lee a nice draw and pass uh sending through tom wright for the first try for the wallabies 26 minutes in 15 points to 10 uh 29 minutes in another scrum penalty ellis genge getting on tupo and england kick another one third 18 points to 10 30 33 minutes into the game there was a short on penalty from the scrum for the Wallabies. Uh, a quick tap and go for the Wallabies from Rob, Rob, Robbie V. Got pretty, some nice good form momentum. And then uh, McDermott uh, was on the field due to a HRA. Saw the space in front of him, picked and go. Ran through a little gap and then offload to Harry Wilson. Ran in for the try. 17 points to 18. Uh, 40 minutes into the game just before half time. There was a penalty against England from offside. And Wallabies kicked this one. Going in half time, leading 20 points to, to 18. In the uh, in the second half, the uh, the uh, you talk about you talk about uh, what happened in, in the second half. Um, yeah, so in the second half, the you can see that the, the physicality from the Wallabies team has kicked has just you know kicked up another level as well. Uh, they were pretty good in the first half, but the England's you can notice when you see that England's four pack is dropping off in physicality, and the Wallabies four pack is kind of like maintaining, maybe lifting a little bit as well. Uh, Forty nine minutes into the game, uh, there was a, a, a lot of nice. Four Wolf and Wallabies just tight, tight carries. Angus Bell getting over the try line. Uh, and it, there was a, basically like a line out and there was just a short front ball. And then the Wallabies just had the forwards keep punching through. Eventually the ball went to the blind short side. Uh, Jeremy Williams dunked the ball in. Uh, it looked like Foot might have touched the line, but the referee basically need clear and obvious evidence that the ball was indeed in touch. And uh, they couldn't quite tell if the, the, the ball had been on the ground because of the camera angles or not. So uh, Wallabies get this one. No clear evidence that the foot was in touch before the ball was grounded. 25 points to 18. And at this point, I actually wrote in my note, England looked exhausted already. Uh, like, the four packs was just like, you know, kind of, you can see they're all pretty gassed. Uh, you know, the, 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 the people were kind of like taking a bit of breaks, wanting to take breaks left and right. Uh, 53 minutes into the game, there was a really nice counter-attack from Tom Wright. Uh, again, England's lazy defenders was just like expecting him to kick. Uh, Tom Ross inside a 22 and just ran through a nice little gap. And then there was a, uh, there was a, uh, yeah, there was a penalty following this for, uh, I think for offside. And then Wallabies kicked this one, 18 points to 28. Uh, at this point, it's looking pretty bad for England. 10 points down, they have to, someone has to step up. I'm sure enough, Mr. Marcus Smith uh, stepping up for England. England had an opportunity to kick three points. They go for the line out. And uh, they, the, the Marcus Smith, they had a more on Marcus Smith swept around with his uh, winger. All his slide home to the blind side. They got the ball. There was like four or five players in front of the defenders. And Marcus Smith threaded the needle. Perfectly puts the ball through for all his slide home to ground this one. 23 points to 28. Catching up uh, for England. The, uh, the camera at this point switched to George Ford ready to come on. And it was met with booing. From England fans at Twickenham, yeah, and luckily they did not. Uh, Steve Bothway has made the, uh, the 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 smart decision not to take take Mark Smith off for George Ford. They just put uh, Mark Smith at fullback, and turns out still probably uh, the booing was warranted because George Ford did throw a intercept. Sixty eight minutes into the game, uh, the the what do you call it? The uh, um, uh, yeah, the again this was. Um, uh, Marcus Smith taking the ball from the fullback position. Nice run through. Getting through the, uh, uh, over the advantage line. And uh, the, the Wallabies was struggling a little bit. The, there was a line out and eventually the ball sort of came out. Uh, the, the Wallabies were just under pressure from the forwards. And eventually the ball spread out wide. Don Brown got the ball. Uh, did what probably everybody was expecting of him. Drawn past two players. Uh, creating a space out wide for England. Swing up. Ollie Slyhorn to go in. 30 points to 28. What? Well, um, Marcus Smith keeps this one from the side. At this point, you can see, despite the fact that there's about 10 minutes left on the clock, uh, the English team just looked like they wanted to finish, just wanted to, to run the clock down. Box kick, box kick, box kick, box kick uh, from the from the from the fly, uh, from the from the from the what's it called? From the um from the number from the reserve number nine. Uh, what's his name? 
Randall, Harry Randall, just box kicking constantly. And eventually there was a lot now for England. And uh, under pressure, George Ford threw a pass to the ball. Look at that was on the ground, bounced on the ground, and they were scooped up by Andrew Calloway. Ran the other way, try time, 30 points to 35. Wallabies taking back the lead, and it's looking pretty bad. Five minutes left, and once again, Marcus Smith showing what he can do. Got the ball, ping pong accurate, just grabbed the ball down the field. And um, uh, what's his name? Tom Roy was tackled in goal, and England had a five meter scrum, pounding the scrum penalty advantage for England. And then eventually, the Maru Toji pounced himself through for the try. 37 points to 35 uh, with one last swing out of the Wallabies. Again, the kickoff, just as Swali disrupted. It looked like Maru Toji was saying that it wasn't 10 meters, but he did play the ball. He caught the ball and then he dropped it. It wasn't like he dropped it right away. He caught the ball and then dropped it. So the Wallabies had a scrum. This scrum must have went for like three or four resets. And then the Wallabies just grind, grind, grind. I was like, please don't drop the ball. Uh, and eventually, the Wallabies just spread the ball out wide. Um, let Nicky Tao draw and pass. Back ball flick. And uh, Callaway, uh, sorry, Jorgensen, Max Jorgensen ran down the sideline. 37-42. Um, the, the conversion was good as well. So Donaldson kicked this one from the sideline just to, just to put the cherry on top. And um, yeah, really, 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 really good performance. And um, happy days. Wallabies is on the way back to the top once again. And um, we are plunged. We're slowly, we're, we're still ninth ranked in the team, so England will lost a lot of points following this one. Let's have a look. How many points England lost from this? Like, would have been a lot, actually. Uh, actually, we'll look at. Uh, actually, we'll have a look at it in the news because, uh, yeah, I don't want to spoil the results for the, any other games if you haven't watched them yet. Because if I type in the, uh, the rankings, it's gonna spoil everybody's results. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys a bit later. And uh, definitely gonna see you guys for the screen ball again uh, tomorrow morning.